almost less is sort of more. So it's kind of a layering process. You, you put some on and then you, you got to take some off. It gets a little bit too heavy. When do I turn it on? When do I turn it off? Right now I'm about halfway. You can tell my voice is just slightly lower. Uh, it's kind of like a process. I go through my mind and I think, you know, how would Rocky sound in the morning? And I know that sounds a little odd, but if you get into character earlier, it's a mindset. I don't always think in character. Sometimes, you know, the voice gets a little, the vocal cords from, yeah, how you doing? <laughs> Adds up at the end of the day. Butterfly stitches don't really hold that well. At, at least the type I get by, I don't know, maybe by a cheap can or something, but they don't really hold up, hold up that well. So, of course, you gotta have a little wound. You gotta be a moron to wanna be a fighter, you know what I mean? So, Rappy almost guaranteed to end up a bum. Sometimes I got pain all over. Feels not like a large wound, you know? Uh, here comes a large wound. See, Rocky's not as macho as a lot of people think, so. He's got like a makeup brush and stuff. When you think about it, I came from a very loving mother and father, uh, very middle class. We had a vacation every year. The bills were always paid. The electricity was never shut off and there was always food in the fridge. You know, we always had a car. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know what the significance was initially of watching a 30 year old third rate fighter who was a leg breaker for the mob get a shot at the greatest title in the world. I, I don't know why. It probably started with me uh, watching television this one night and uh, watching the promos for the film. And so Michael was watching TV, I think, and he overheard me telling Dee about the, the movie. So he had no clue, you know, at that point about what, what, what is eventually gonna change his life what was eventually going to impact every one of us in ways that we had no clue. When he started developing his, his own identity and, and his own feelings about this character that he discovered, he watched the film so many times, he was looking for places where he could duplicate things that he saw in the film. And the oxy steps, the oxy was plot, the closest, the thing, closest yeah. thing was right, it was a block away from our house. And he would get up 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, do his raw egg thing, you know, like we saw Rocky do in the film. And then he'd head out with his, his, his uh, Chuck Taylor Bobo sneakers. I mean, there was no protection in those shoes. It was like running barefoot. He would do that. He would run five, six, seven, ten 10 miles sometimes. And he'd go up there and do the Rocky thing. And he did that, how many, I don't know how many times a week he did that. When I was a kid, I used to take the cassette tapes and just record it. The Rocky movie would be playing and I would just be listening to the lines over and over and over again. Sometimes um, we don't know where Rocky ends and Mike begins or vice versa. Um, it really just depends on what he's doing. Uh, if he just gets into character, especially if we're watching it. Um, I've watched it <laughs> a couple hundred times. Um, it's in my marriage contract. I'm like, oh, I, ha I almost had him here the whole time, and oh, I lost him. I come down here, and I kind of just hit the bags a little bit and just work in front of the mirror, and how would I look, and how, the angles, and you know, how, does, how would Rocky have moved, and just let go of the issues I have. Whatever baggage is bothering me, I, I, I bring it and I leave it down those steps. These are his, his handprints, and he's got this really bizarre left pinky. It goes way out. 
you know, and I don't mind saying my hands are pretty close in size. I mean, his, his are really wide, but you know, his fingers are a, a little bit bigger. I bought about seven of these, and I left this one in the package. Um, it had a yellow background, a styrofoam yellow background that really, it wasn't really quite uh, that authentic. Um, so what I did, because I'm a bit of a, a, a tailor, a sewer, uh, I kind of took material, I stretched it all out, I broke the belt down, I, I bought a few of them, I took them apart, then I re-sewed things together, I bought the yellow so it would mimic the actual Rocky belt that he wore in the movie. I used to say, oh Christ, what are we gonna do with this kid? You know, he's not, he's not, he's not doing better in school, he's not, he, he's not doing what we, we want him to do, and I was afraid for him. I was, I was afraid that he was taking so many shots from everybody and, and nobody understood him. That, that was the thing. Nobody understood him. Nobody got him. Art can be kind of therapeutic at times. Doing these paintings, they, they, they become like my friends when I, when I paint them. Stallone was, he was doing a lot of art uh, paintings himself. And uh, this is a total copying of Sylvester's style. And when I stopped trying to imitate Sylvester's art, I just did what was inside me. And then about halfway through, it honestly became my feelings. You know, everything on here means really something very deep and, and personal for me. The book, uh, there's the name of it, it's Cue the Rocky Music. It started off as a thank you letter to Stallone. When I wrote it, it took about two years to write it. And uh, I simply just wanted to thank him. That, that was the basis of, of writing a letter that turned into a book. My fear was that he, he was losing his own identity as Michael, and he kept morphing back into this character. That's how strong the images from the movie hit him. And he just kept absorbing it day after day, night after night, week after week, month after year, year after year. He's always trying to, to, to match expectation with um, reality. You know, what's expected of him is what, what is it that he can really accomplish? And uh, so I said, you know what, Mike? I said, let's put a gym down in the cellar. And we had this old dirt cellar down there and got some barbells and some weights and this, that, and the other thing. And they're just, just working out. And he, uh, the next thing I know, he gets so serious about it. He's into it now. He's, all of a sudden, he found something that he could physically change himself, make himself stronger. Apollo's gym that he trained at was Tough Gym, and the sign was very similar to this with Jim at the bottom. So my mother and father said, you know, let's do a little something. Let's make this a, a real nice place. My first speed bag, I was a short kid at the time, so I had like a milk crate, and I had to stand here, and here I am, just this little kid, the hands wrapped. The wraps didn't fit because my hands are so small, and they were all jumbled, and I learned to do it. What's interesting about this is the, all the eye holes that I had from the, the eye bolt um, to hold the heavy bag. I would beat that as hard as I could, a, a 11, 12, 13 year old kid. I did it so much, I would shake the metal eye bolt loose, so I had to move it over one. Then I had to move it over one every it couple like of months. Holes. It does, it, it looks like somebody's like drilling for a gold or, or something. Upstairs in the bed, he's hitting that bag again. Oh my God, he's got to stop. And when that's... is he going to stop? This is, and you know, what, what, long after Michael left, you know, we, I, I used the gym with some minor equipment that we had around. And as everything was being stripped away, you know, over the time, one morning I stood here and I looked at it and I said, you know what? That's going to stay forever. Mm -hmm, yeah. That'll stay as long as it stays on the yeah. wall. Because it meant so much to the both of us and to the, the family. So, Mr. Stallone. Mr. Rocky. I don't know how many husbands have a book put together of all of their crap that adds up to an amazing amount of accomplishment. 
And you know, when you have a wife who thinks that much of you to, to do that, I mean, this took her weeks. This particular one right here, you know, he's on the top of the steps of the museum and he's just staring out. I like it because it's not posed and he's just lost in his own thought. He's in his own little Mike Rocky world and he looks good, but <laughs> he's just very appreciative. And that's one thing that I love about him is he appreciates every moment. We could go to Philly 400 times and each time is a different experience. He just, he really takes it all in when he's there. You know, he just, he just appreciates every moment of it. And you know, he's not a crazy fan. Well, he's a fan. Well, he is crazy, but he's not a crazy fan if you put that together. Right now it's, I, I think I'm on his radar. I, I think that's the most accurate way I could say it. I wish I could sit here and say that we're friends and that I emailed, but it's not true. I, I sort of know his brother Frank. We've, we've emailed each other once in a while and he talks about me to um, common friends that we both have. But uh, I don't know, maybe a Sly gets the book. Maybe I could say I'm friendly with Sly, you know? We've had our run-ins and our, I want to say we're friends, but not yet, <laughs> not yet. Well, here we are, 1818 Tuscola Street. How's the rock you built? Um, this place was a very secret location for years. Uh, fans tried to find it, but they couldn't, it tucked away. And there's some great stories that over the years I've gotten a chance to talk to a lot of the, the neighbors that live here. And we really, they really had some great stories. People coming at all different hours, want to see where Rocky lived and uh, the filming locations. People come from Japan, they come from Sweden, Germany, you name it. They just want to find this location and they just want to get their picture taken with 1818, like near their shoulder where Rocky was. And actually on the street, this first manhole, I, I'm pretty sure it's this first one here where Adrian gives Rocky a butt kiss. And they start jumping around. It was right, right about here. It was like, yo, butt kiss, how you doing, kid? And they're hugging him right about here. And the dog's running around in circles, you know? And he brings them up inside and then they go for a run. You know, for me, coming here is, uh, it's like a rejuvenation, or uh, it's, it's like you channel Rocky a little bit more, but you channel the goodness of the character. To me, this place is, uh, I like stopping by just, I don't know, my little Graceland, I guess you could call it. But as you can tell, not everyone is a, a Rocky fan. Um, some people have a certain outlook that, you know, doesn't jive well. That's okay. They're entitled to it. It's, it's stuff like that sometimes that gives me, I, I, like now I leave with the, I know, honey. But you know how I am. I'll, it, it'll, it'll, it'll bother me for for weeks now. No. And you know what? It could be just one of the crazy neighbors that just happened to live there now. He wasn't there before. Because honestly, every single time we've come here, we've never met the same person twice. I mean, look at where it is. Love it. You know, that's that's a tough street, I guess. You know. That's really sad. I just gotta. I'm just turning around. To go someplace better. So I don't have time. coffee. I want coffee. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just nervous about Kensington. I'll be, I'll be in a much better, honey. I'll be in a much better mood when I get out of Kensington. That's all. I know. Because you know, you're I'm, a little, I'm, you're well, a little just, Mikey Downer right now. I know, I know, I know. I'll get out of it. I'm just worried about everybody's safety. That's all. And, and we're going to be fine. But we always have good times in Kensington. It'll be fine. It's not bad. It really isn't. I mean. Come here. I just want you to snap off. Mm. Fine. 
I know, I just want it to be right for everybody. I mean, we couldn't get more down under than Rocky. And Michael identified with that because he was going through all these transitions. He was segueing from adolescence, you know, this young, young guy who was all of a sudden discovering himself. Who am I? What am I? What do I do? How do I fit in? Where, 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 where's my future? What's my destiny? I don't know any of these things. I know what I don't like, but I know what I do like. So, uh, of course, anyone who knows who Sylvester Stallone is, unless they've been living in a cave, uh, they know he's got, you know, thick, wavy Italian hair. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> I didn't. My hair was poker straight. Just straight. It was dark, but straight. That would never do for to be rocky. You've got to have thick hair, like a pompadour, you know? How am I going to get that? Well, first I started with my mother's curling iron uh, and wasn't very successful. So then there's a, a barber curled my hair with a curling iron one fall afternoon. And he said, Mike, let me do this for you. If you like this, we'll go to the next step. But what did he say the next level? I think a pill, like a wavy hair from a pill, a cream I rub on my hair, an oil, an ointment. No, a perm. You know who got perms? Porn stars and chicks. I got it on a Friday, went to school on Monday, and everyone's like, what's up with your hair? What's up? What are you talking about? <laughs> you need glasses. What are you, what are you seeing? What? When I met him, his hair was like a, oh, how do I describe it? Like a chia pet? Out of control It was chia Rambo. Pet. It was just, it was just Rambo. That's all. Maybe from two? Or was it? Well, Rambo 3 had just come out in 88 because we met in 89. Okay, so it was from 3. It was, you know, it was longer and, you know, it was all wavy and stuff. And it looks good. It looks really good. <laughs> I liked it. See, I appear to dress normal, but there is a whole different rationalization of why I'm wearing the clothes that I'm wearing. Yes. Oh, I... it's new shirts. You know, um, every time Sylvester comes out with a new movie, there's this a new... Right here. There's a new... That's for The Expendables. The Expendables. This that's is the, the green, green t-shirt. But we've gone through... Tangling cash glasses to Rocky Waves the from old, Rocky yeah. Four. We've gone through. Remember Get glasses. Carter with the goatee? Get Carter with the gray suit. I had to buy goatee. a gray suit that was like that shark skin. To take his Get yeah. Carter pictures. This is a process though. This isn't just randomly coming across a Target and having a t-shirt. This is like a three-day affair with trying to find a shirt that will be, you know, like a replica of something that he wore in the movie. We've went through many different characters together. Uh, I've got my Rocky leather jacket. When Rocky runs in his sweats, he, uh, he has a particular t tear here. Uh, there's a tear in the back with a worn, uh, a, a worn mark around the collar. Now the thing that makes this so rare is this waistband. You cannot find the waistband like this. If it has a waistband like this, it has very thick, uh, like a, a rubber band inside it. Uh, and the long string, of course, that Rocky had in that old beat up sweats. Try to keep it as authentic as we can. You know, and Rocky's he's just a crazy, jealous brother to me. You know, they, we all saw this when Rocky was getting off the plane in Russia. No training, they grow reindeer out here. As you guys will remember, this is the dinner jacket Rocky wears in Balboa. But it ain't about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. For me, I'm never gonna win an Oscar. I'm never gonna win an Emmy or a Tony. Uh, these are like awards for me. These are landmarks in my life, uh, benchmarks, things I never, ever could have imagined would have happened. Well, I'm just so proud of them. Uh, a lot of people helped me get here, and uh, I know to a lot of people it might not mean much. It just might be another guy walking down the street. I suppose that's how I feel if I met Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt. I mean, I like them. They're good people, but they would not I don't think I'd hang around for a photo. But with these guys, 
I did. Sylvester was so new, so on the scene at the time. He was like Brando, okay? He was like Brando was in the 50s. He was, he mowed it. Brando emoted. When Brando was on screen, you just, you felt everything he was saying, everything he believed. Sylvester, Rocky, everything he believed was on his sleeve. It was on his face. It was in his actions. It was in his, his hands. It was everywhere. So I, I was going, oh, this, this guy's got to win the Academy Award for this. This guy's got it. He's, he's nailed it. He's, he's got it. He, he just makes everybody believe what's happening here. Rocky. Uh, there he goes. He wins the award, the Academy Award. And uh, we all looked at each other and said, oh, God, Stallone, wow, what a, what a name. What a funny name, Sylvester Stallone. What the hell, what the hell kind of name is that? <laughs> so, Italian. Italian. You know, it was Italian. Of course it was Italian. And Sylvester being the proper pronunciation of the name. And, because I was raised in two families. I was raised in the Ukrainian family, my father's a lineage and ethnic background, and my mom's, uh, they were Italian people. But the Italian part of it was more dominant in our family, because uh, my mother's relatives, sisters and brothers were very, uh, very high Italian, as they say, very, very big time Italians. And anyway, long story short, I, you know, I'm very prideful of that, very prideful of our, our ethnic background. But how does that fit in with Rocky? Uh, uh, <laughs> it fits in with Rocky because Rocky is Italian. He ate like we ate. He but, ate brujol. He ate pasta brujol. He ate all that stuff. Okay, here we are. Uh, as circumstances have proven themselves over and over again, uh, I forced Gump my way into um, getting the information I needed to get the book to Sly's house out in uh, California. So I'm going to print out this letter. I'm gonna put it in a book, I'm gonna sign the book, and I'm gonna mail it out to him, and maybe he'll get it, maybe he'll read it. Uh, if nothing else, um, we did our best to get it to him, so. Oh, this is, this is amazing. This is what we've been waiting for forever. You know, for Sylvester to have this book and to finally understand the impact of how he's affected Mike's life and both of our lives actually for 23 years we've been together you know um this is just amazing for him i'm so happy for him and you know sylvester if you're looking at this i would love for you to just be able to read it and see just the dedication and the impact that you actually have on people's lives and how just something that you've invented 35 years ago how that affected people's lives and he's just patterned his life off it the whole time Like, when, thanks for being my inspiration. I, I, the pressure. Maybe, like, uh, this book is, a, is, a, is my way of saying thanks to you. Right. The best way I can say thank you. Sly, this is the best way I can say thank you. Yeah, it's nice and sweet. And I think that's thanks it. Thanks for the inspiration. Yeah. I think that's it, Sly. This is the best way I can think of to thank you, Mike. Letter. <laughs> Don't want to forget this. Had it going there. Okay. Oh. Yes. Right now, mm -hmm. my biggest hope is that it doesn't get thrown out because it clearly looks like it's not. Yeah. It's coming from a fan. Like you know what I mean? It's not a professional company. It's just me. Right. And um, I'm gonna put a little note on the back of this. So hopefully someone will flip it over and say, oh, this will be a, a key right. for him to remember right. what actually happened with some very important people in his life that we're common friends with. So we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, awesome. I, I'm hoping for some uh, heads up, uh, an email, maybe a picture with Sly holding the book, right? I mean, that would be amazing. Right here, that, Yeah, that's fine. There yeah, that ought to work. I know, I saw that. All right, so I got the letter. Okay. There it goes. All right. Here we 
we go, for better or for worse, it's on its way. Um, is this gonna clear it, or I That's can do, fine. okay. That'll work. <laughs> That's great! That's great! <laughs> Isn't it great you can make your wife cry? That's great. She's proud. Mike said something to me 20 years ago, and it stuck with me the whole time. All he ever wanted was to be able to talk to Sylvester, just to give him the thanks that, that he wanted for ever, for inspiring his life. And uh, Mike always said, you know, what if it would be if I could sit on the couch and have a beer with Sylvester and just talk to him, just without anybody else, just talk to him just like it's, you know, a normal thing. And it, I would love for that to happen. I'd love to sit off to the side and, you know, see how, how impactful that could actually be on Mike's life for the rest of his life, just to have a meeting. We went through a time where he didn't really, he had a lot of different jobs, one after another, and he didn't really know what he wanted to do with his life. And yeah, and he really. And it was so hard because Dee. I was she, hoping he'd go to. She pulled, back to she'd, we, we'd have our conversations at night, and she's going, Mike, how are we gonna get this kid to realize he's gotta get his education? So important. I said, you know what, Ben? You know, it ain't gonna happen the way we want it to happen. You know, it's not gonna go the way you want it to go. 83, 84, First Blood came out. And so he was fixed on that. And so part of my memory is not so much of Rocky, but the knife and the canvas top. And I remember thinking, yeah, that's Rambo. I got a little older, I saw First Blood, and as you can see, the gorge is so reminiscent of First Blood, it was a natural attraction for me. So I would get dressed up in my Rambo clothes, and the jeans and the boots and the red sweatshirt or whatever, and I'd put the, the giant brown poncho over me, and I would bring like a thing of matches, and I would start fires over in the wood, like little, and I'd have like hot dogs. Literally, I'd bring hot dogs with me, I'd wrap them in tin foil and I put him on a stick, or I, I had the Rambo knife. We were kept saying, oh, well, he's gonna put money together, he's gonna go to college, and he's gonna do all this stuff. But all he was getting, he was getting to be a better Rocky. He was a better Rambo. He became, he was becoming better at his fantasy. He was a part-time police officer, and he couldn't make ends meet, so he had another job. And so now the, tribula the trials and the tribulations start to mount. I had like 25 or 30 jobs. I was, uh, I worked in corporate America. I mean, I, I had responsibility. I was respected to some degree. I was in charge of 25 people in, in a million dollar business. I mean, I, I, I did try. Even when I was a cop, I, the people we'd lock up and we'd, I, we'd be doing reports, the cages that would be in back of me, right? So I'd be at the desk. What do you think I talked to the guys in the cage about? Rocky. Like, criminals like Rocky, they just, you know, got off the way a little bit, that's all. But don't mean they're not Rocky fans. We started his optical career, and then he took off on that for a good, oh geez, 10, 12 years. For a while, we thought he was gonna be International Optician of the Year. And he wasn't happy. It turned my, my soul inside out. That's the dark, that's dark. You talk about darkness, yeah, that's dark. I became a person I didn't like, I didn't recognize. I don't take anything serious in life. I love life. I wake up, I hit the ground running every day of my life. And with there, it's that nauseous, panic, angst. You just, it's every bad descriptive adjective you want to use, that's corporate America. And nothing you do is ever good enough. No matter how hard you try, no matter how many hours you put in. You know what I mean? You're getting paid 25 hours, uh, $25 an hour, and, but it doesn't really matter because you're working 60 hours a week, your salary, who cares? You know, you're burning yourself out and it's... That was a little dark for me, a little bit. 
nothing ever held my focus. My mother, she would say to me, you know, what are you gonna do with yourself, Michael? What are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. I had zero interest, and that's how my life has been. There's nothing that just hit me that I wanted to do. I wanted to be Rocky. That's what I wanted to be. And I sort of am in a weird way. Rocky Balboa, according to Cumberland County resident Mike Kunda, who at the urging of friends and family, recently entered a Rocky look-alike contest in Philadelphia. All of a sudden, like a week before the contest, I get a phone call. I was in the top five, and I thought, yo! Kunda came in first place. He's taking his newfound fame on the road, speaking at places like Manor Care and Camp Hill, where he shares his thoughts on the movie and what it means to countless fans like himself. Bill's gaps, you know, she's got gaps, I got gaps. Yo, Adrian, we did it. If you're a true Rocky fan, you gotta get off your couch, you gotta make the effort to go to Philly to be part of this. Rocky made the effort to be a better boxer, a better husband. As fans, we want to be the best fans, and I know that's corny, but that's what we want to do. We just want to be the best fans we can, and to do that, you got to make an effort. You got to get up early. You got to stand in the rain and get interviewed, with, you know, about Rocky. This is what why we do it. If you just want to sign him in for you me, you got it. This weekend, we've got people coming from London and California and Florida to this event that we put together. Where are in, you in, Phil to be? in Philly. Philly? Yeah, the whole weekend we're doing uh, a whole Rocky 35th anniversary thing. Mm -hmm. uh, a tour bus, a lookalike contest, oh, cool. and uh, just getting fans to get together. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully it'll grow from there. You know, you never know what to expect. The thing about Amy is that uh, her and Rob, I gave them a copy of the book uh, a couple of months back. Yeah. They read it and, and enjoyed it. Uh, and. We went to pick up Mason the one time, and I found a, a DVD at the bottom of Mason's bag when I got home. She bought me Rocky on DVD and said, so, well, keep the hope alive or something, yep, yep. keep the hope going. Yep. And she really only knows me from here, and I That's thought, right. That's right. this like, I don't know, it's like the good karma of Rocky. It's everywhere. I mean, a movie come out in 76, and it's still bringing goodness. I don't know. He, he just has that, that charisma about him. Like, he just has the enthusiasm about it so much that... It's like, yeah, 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 just rooting. It's like the, your favorite football team and stuff. You know, they're just out there doing their thing, and you just want to root them on. And he's kind of like that football team. You just want to root them on. Driving to Philly, uh, in my brain, I, I go right back to 11 years old. You know, seeing Rocky for the first time and just really... That feeling, it's that feeling I get on Christmas morning, that, that excited rush of adrenaline. I never get nervous. I mean, I, I'll i talk on camera in front of a billion people. I, I just, it doesn't bother me when I'm dressed up as Rocky. Like, right now, I can tell I'm halfway. I'm halfway between Mike and Rocky, right? Then there's Stallone, which is totally different than Rocky, you know? Stallone is arching of the eyebrows, it's a certain positioning, it's a certain biting, a, a pursing of my lips, like a, you know, a slight, like, oh yeah, right? Say a little, little tight, and it, it's that. But sometimes I'm just me, and sometimes I know when I'm doing it, and sometimes I don't know when I'm doing it. Oh, it's, it's, it's a trip being, being me at this time, man. Anybody else need a pee break? Okay! How are you? Mike Tunde, nice to meet you. Kelly, nice to meet you too. are you kidding me? It's a pleasure. It's a Jerry, how are you? How are you? I'm Mike, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought it would be fascinating to meet Rocky one day, and, and when I connected with Mike, I thought, well, geez, maybe he's the closest I'm ever going to get. I 
I mean, I've seen the sights a million times, but I've never seen the sights on a big bus with everybody that's as crazy about Rocky as I am. If there was a Sylvester Stallone test, I would be, I would have an A in it without even, you know, studying. Because I've done all the studying my whole life. It's natural. Mike is amazing, it, you know, playing the Rocky character over it, and it just, he does it very, in a very good way. He's really funny, he's down to earth. It's an honor to, you know, be with him today. This is my first time in the United States of America in my whole life, yeah. For, for this event and to come to America, it's just blown me away. It's just blown me completely. This is just a dream, you know, I'm gonna wake up and I've just been dreaming the whole thing. That's how I feel. You know, I, I don't judge, you know, I don't. I, I, I love to write about people who have passion, whether it's whatever it's for, you know, I think that's what makes life rich, having passion. And these people here have passion for the movie and it's profoundly influenced them and I want to chronicle that and, and God bless them, you know. Rocky films elevate the spirit of man, which I think is inside all of us and uh, it's about being better than you can be. It's about striving for higher goals, higher mountaintops. I've got children now. Um, you know, I, I try to convey to them the, the value of, of the, you know, the character and what he had to offer throughout all of the movies. I had a job for 17 years. I've always had a job, always been motivated and lost my job last year. So I'm going back to a second interview on Tuesday and so just, you know, motivated. And I really needed this pick me up and it's just been amazing. I mean, Mike was just out of this world. I've never been sort of the favorite for anything. You know, you question your own ability, you question your own beliefs even, you know, but ro the, the Rocky films are symbolic in the fact that they, they're always there to sort of depend upon when, you know, times of need where you just draw upon them to get inspiration and that's, the boxing is just secondary. The boxing is just symbolic for life. I think it was Mike who said it was the Woodstock event for Rocky events, and I thought, what a great line. I'd like to see somebody make an effort to you know, carry the Rocky story through a, a next generation. I think Mike's got the energy to do that and the talent to do that. I think the more I watch Rocky, the more it intensifies and backs up just standing at the end of the day. I mean, my God, Rocky is a benchmark. Just, just make it. I, I don't have to win. I don't gotta have the, I don't got, I don't have a fancy car. I just wanna, I just wanna be standing. I wanna make it home at the end of the day. And that, that I think ultimately, I mean, I'm 43 years old now, and I think ultimately that is what resonates with me. Because I'm not, I'm not a superstar achiever. I don't have blind ambition. I just, I just want to be. I want to do what I love, and that's, it's talking about Rocky and the inspiration. I've sold books in you know, all across the state, so I'm, I'm very proud of it. I didn't get any feedback from him, and, and I understand it. I mean, Sly is a force of nature. He's always in the gym. He's got his family. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe it got accidentally tossed out, I, I have no idea. It's, it's building. It's, it's absolutely building to some type of uh, apex or, or, or perfect moment. I, I, don't, I don't know what is coming. And it just seems like I could see light at the end of the tunnel where I could just get, move forward quicker with it. You want the real Rocky, you're looking at him. No doubt about it. It's the one thing I do well. I do Rocky well.
Jimmy, Mike Kunda, your favorite Rocky Balboa impersonator. You ain't gonna believe this, but I got a great call just now on a gig coming up in Ohio. Hey gang, Big Chuck and Little John here for Mama Roberto's Restaurant. Winner of the Silver Spoon Awards for Cleveland's Best Italian Restaurant. Family owned and operated and known for large portions of great food at modest prices. That's right! The cannolis are so big, you can only eat one. And Mama Roberto's is open every day for lunch and dinner. They have great pizza too. Buy one pizza, pay for one. While supplies last. Mama Roberto's award winning restaurant, 8658 Mentor Avenue in Mentor. It doesn't even look like a lake, it just looks like it's a, an ocean, man. No, I've never been to a Great Lake before, and uh, I just, it's, a great, uh, it's a great opportunity to come out here. That was half the reason why I was so thrilled to come out. I wanted to see Lake Erie. I normally would never have come to Ohio. There would be no reason for me to come here. So, I mean, it's like if you're driving cross-country and you see, like, the largest ball of twine. You just want to see it so you can stay at Christmas dinner. Hey, you know where I was this year? It's the largest ball of twine. That's incredible. You know, I was telling my father, when I started all this, nowhere else you're going to be able to do Rocky. You can only do Rocky in Philadelphia. Then we get the call to go to Dover, Delaware, the casino. Rocky and Ben Franklin. And I hear men in Ohio. I mean, I would never have thought in a thousand years. It just blows my mind. That's just a long night. We were talking a little bit before about, you know, about being like a doctor or being like an attorney or a lawyer or, we, or whatever. Um, it's, that's not meant for him. You know, this, this is where he's meant to be. He's exactly where he's meant to be right now. You know, we, we struggle, we go through and we panic and we're like, oh my God, I hate living check to check. Or I'm like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna pay this bill because we have this coming up. And it, it, does, it just, for some reason, even though we have that fear, it doesn't matter because he's supposed to be doing this right now. He's supposed to be exactly where he is. My little boy Frankie's obsessed with the Rocky movies. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Yo, Ohio. To my left, for the first and only time, <laughs> Get it. we're broadcasting from the Stage One Audio Remote Studio, sponsored by Lake Tran, located in front of Macy's North End of the Mall in the beautiful sunlit atrium. His name is Mike Kunda. I hope I'm saying that right. And he's going to be, by the way, at Mama Roberto. All right, thank you. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I love this. Uh, I love this town. Mentor is very, very classy. to welcome you all to the official, unofficial, Sylvester Stallone round three weekend here at Mama Roberto's. Hey guys, how are you? <laughs> oh, not bad, you know. I'm getting hungry and hungry just watching everybody eat. Is that, is that the veal or the chicken parm? Chicken parm. You guys gotta hang out and come over with us, watch some movie, you know, talk some trivia. Are you good with your Rocky trivia? Now, did you come for the food or did you come for the Sylvester Stallone night? <laughs> you know what? At least you're honest. Do you, you remember what was Rocky's dog's name? Come on, think, think, think. It's been so long since I've seen it. I'll come back. Now, remember, we got, we're giving away three cannolis. Have you ever had the cannolis here? We're giving away three cannolis tonight. So if you know it, you could be eligible for some, plus a T-shirt. You got to see this great T-shirt we got. It's awesome. You're going to love it. 
But listen, you guys gonna hang out with us for a while? You gonna stop, stop by over next door? We got the Rocky movies running all night. You're gonna have a, a, a good time. We're doing some trivia. Do you know your Rocky trivia? What'd you end up getting tonight? Fried shrimp, nice. What does it come with? Like uh, rice? Does it come with salad? What does it come with? Uh, French fried potatoes, coleslaw, uh, Italian bread. Oh. All right, stop. You're making me hungry. Oh my God, it does sound good. Enjoy your food. You know, it's all very edible. Uh. Michael wanted to join the wrestling team. And I say, hey, Mike, go for it. I mean, you know, maybe he was only 120 pounds at the time. I, you know, whatever he was, his weight was, going to lightweight or whatever their class situations were. I said, but you know what, kiddo? If you go into it, then go into it full force. Go into it with all your heart, all your soul, all your being, okay? So, you know, he trained and he worked out. And here we come to the day when he had to make, uh, uh, he had to do perform. He had, he had to do his thing. And that was a tough day for Mike. I should have wrote down the questions. Yeah, ice water. Fine, thank you very much. It does get a little warm in the in the leather. Like, what, uh, what do you want to do for like the cannolis? You want to like give them a slip of paper or something? Or so here we are. We're walking toward the high school, which is only a block and a half away from here. And we see Michael walking toward us. You know, he's walking away from the school. And I thought that was odd. And what's he walking toward the house for? So he goes, oh, dad, he goes, the, the kid forfeited the match or something. He says, I, he says my, my match, my thing is over. It sounded right to me. It sounded right. So we walked back to the house, and I, I said, Mike, what's going on? What's the matter here? He goes, no, no, dad, the kid, the kid forfeited the match. He said, whatever, he made up a story, whatever it was. I said, no, nah, not acceptable. I said, you committed to this. You know you did. You said to yourself, you wanted to do something here. So you're gonna go back there and you're gonna wrestle. I don't care if you get beat, you win, you lose, it doesn't matter, but you're not walking away from this. I said, because you know, Mike, if you walk away from this, you're gonna walk away from a lot of other things in life. You're just gonna do that. And I said, you can't, you can't, you can't do that to yourself. You can't put that on yourself. So he, he, was, he didn't want to do it. He was tough. He was adamant. He just didn't want to do it, you know. I said, come on, let's go. We're going. I said, Jay, come on. You take, we're taking your brother back to the school, and that's it. He's going to wrestle, and that's the end of it. So we're walking in, and it was, I wish we had a camera following us. He's going, I don't know, Dad, I can't do this. I can't win this. I can't win. I can't win. I can't beat this kid. This kid's too much for me. This, I can't do this, Dad. I said, stop it. You can do this. Just do it. Who cares if you lose? It's not about losing. It's not about winning. It's just about doing it. Just do it. You'll feel better. If you win, you'll feel great. And if you lose, you'll feel crappy. But you'll have done it. You will have done it. So we walked back to the school. And uh, the, ma the his, his thing didn't come up yet. You know, his match, you know? Yeah, all right. Hey, guys, how are you? Huh? Uh, very good, very hungry looking at all of this. Uh, we go back and we're sitting there in the stands. He's there with his, his team, you know, and call his name. And he's got to go up and wrestle. And First prize of the night because he knew it was in Philadelphia. You know, of course, he gets his ass kicked around the, the mat, you know. And <laughs> but I was so proud of him, man. I was so proud of him. It was so great. <laughs> Uh, you're pretty good, huh? Hey, you know what? The free movie pass. Enjoy. Enjoy, all right? No, oh, no. No? No? Oh. The meat. The meat. <laughs> I hate to walk away and not give you another prize. <laughs> I love it. I love it. My favorite memory is of him on a winter day, we would look out the kitchen window and there he was, leather jacket, black hat, ball bouncing, 
and we were all saying, look at him, he doesn't care what anyone says about him. He's doing what he wants to do. That movie gave him the energy that he needed. about what he's doing is everyone should have that type of enthusiasm about whatever they get in. Mike's trying to portray that kids, you gotta have your own dream, you gotta have your own motivations to get somewhere. Maybe you're not gonna be the starting lineman, maybe you're not gonna be the starting quarterback, but maybe you'll get a shot. Maybe you'll, you'll play a, a quarter. Maybe you'll get in there. How many of us can say we get up every day loving what we do? You just don't. He's just lucky. He never gave up his dream. He never stopped fighting. He never stopped believing. So what more can you say? He's my son. Right before Rocky takes that final breath, you know, it, 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 it's at the end of the movie where he just, <sighs> before he exhales, that's when they stop the movie because they know it doesn't get any better than right at that moment. Uh, his life, he'll never achieve more than he did right there for the first time. And he's holding Adrian and that's all that mattered to him. He didn't want to win, he didn't want the money, it wasn't about the money, it was just about, you know, standing on your feet at the end of the day. That's all he wanted to do, and that's the message I got when I was a kid. <laughs> it wasn't about winning or losing or any of those things. What's your passion? What, when you go home at the end of the day, can you live with yourself? Did you do the best that you could? And most days I didn't. Most days I was so aggravated and frustrated with myself. But when it comes to this, I feel like I could do anything. Conti's music, your script, and the city of Philadelphia. How do you see the actors? Without those yeah. dynamics, no. the music is so sturdy. The red white letters come across the screen. No. It's like something unbelievable is about to happen. I know my DNA changed when I was watching it. I was 11 years old. I saw it for the first time. He sent me down. Oh, I give so much credit to the to the credits. Oh, yeah. Usually back then, in our film, it was an independent film almost. I mean, that's a small budget, 28 day, 28 day show. But they had the audacity to go, oh, with this with trumpets that you would have in a Roman letter. So guys, we're really setting ourselves up here as something special, you know, it didn't have to be.